Hi, Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today we're going to be doing the table runner, which is pin tucked, pin wheels, blocks. Let me show you. If you've got a kit, let's take it out. Let's look at it. If you did not get a kit, you can go to the website, Fort Worth Fabric Studio, and you can download this. It is in the free pattern, this one here. Now it is not the directions for the table runner. It is strictly to make two blocks based on the fabric they've got listed in here. When I pulled out the fabric out of the package, it automatically had A on top, B underneath that, C underneath that, so it was already all in order. Let me get the camera move a little bit. Here's all the fabric. I'm trying to get the glare from the overhead light off of all of this. So I went ahead and I labeled them here, just with the alphabeties. And then that pattern I was telling you about, that you can download off the website that's free it looks like this it's just one sheet it'll tell you the fabric and that block is a 12 inch finish when you sew it together it'll be 12 and a half inches and this makes two based on this fabric right here they do not have the free pattern for the runner they only have it for these blocks i'm on my uh, second strip that i'm doing here and i wanted to stop and i wanted to show you something because i got to thinking about it first off it says to cut this Seven and a half by seven and a half. Well, now you know this is directional. To make it so that it is straight, because that's what you're gonna be striving for. And so, the first thing I did, and there is plenty of fabric to do it in this kit, if you got the kit now, is instead of cutting my piece seven and a half, I cut it seven and three quarters. Then, I turned it sideways, because it is taller than seven and a half inches. I go to the tail end of my fabric because you want to square this up. And I square it up with the side that I've already cut. And I go to the very edge. And then I'm going to take this off right here. So I take it off. And now I know that I have three sides. This one's trimmed and this one's trimmed because this is seven and a half inches. This is trimmed right here. And now all I gotta do is go seven and a half inches. So I put my ruler down for the seven and a half. And always use the same ruler. And if you're gonna start this, please start it before you get started. All of your pieces before you do any cutting because of the shrinkage. And now I don't have to worry that this is not correct and directional. In other words, my trees aren't going like this sideways. I didn't, didn't cut it so that they end up like this. My square is really nice and all my trees are going straight up and down. I just wanted to give you this tip and this is all my leftover fabric. So see, I have plenty of fabric. I did not run out of fabric. When you have all your fabric cut out, this is what you'll have laid out. This is before we start cutting it. That is, up there is the, um, the two nine and a half inch squares, and then the great big huge one I've got laying on my ironing board. So you've probably guessed that all of these big squares like this are all going to need to be cut so that we can make half square triangles out of them. Now each one is gonna make two. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it in case you haven't seen any of my videos before that explain how to make these half square triangles out of these squares. So let me set that Get up. Get yourself a marking utensil, either a pencil this is a friction pen, it's a red one, kind of light because it's pink, or a pencil. I would not use a ballpoint pen. Uh, eventually pencil would actually wash out, but you're gonna be stitching over it, so you'll be fine. You're gonna flip your fabric over because you want to be marking on the wrong side. We're gonna do one at a time. Make sure that your ruler is bigger than your project. You want it sticking out on each end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ruler up here at the corner a little bit to the left because when I put my pen down it will be right up in the corner same with the bottom down here and then I just test it so I'll put my marker I'll go ahead and put a mark on it make sure it's coming in the middle and this is going to be the cutting line so I'm going to go ahead and make this dash lines so just every few doesn't make any difference you're just going to be following it to cut your fabric apart when you're done Just like that. See all the little dashes? Let me see if I can get closer. 
there you go now what you're going to do is you're going to now in this case this is a creative grids ruler the reason i like these rulers i used to get the omni grid which are the sort of a yellowish uh green kind of ruler some of them are yellow some of them are green there's a little yellow one here that i use all the time i use this one all the time so this one doesn't have any markings and by the word markings what i'm representing or what i'm meaning is right here you can see this is got a little bit of frost it's got it up here at the top it's got it here on the side and across the bottom so the bottom and this side here are one quarter inch this side the long side and the short side are a half inch so it's already pre-marked for you so when you look at the ruler you already know that so the advantage to this ruler is that I'm gonna take and on these dashed lines right here which represents my quarter inch I'm going to lay it on the dashed lines that I just made right on top of it and I've covered it I'm gonna put you a little closer and let you see see how I've got them right on top you can barely see the red through it and the reason for that let me back you up a little bit here is that now I want to draw a solid line all the way down from the top up here to the bottom and I'm going back and forth because this comes out very very light but I want to be able to see it when I sew it so now I am a quarter inch away from this line the dash line that I'm actually going to be cutting on now I'm gonna flip my fabric and I'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side so I put my line right on the dash line and then I draw a straight line a quarter inch from it and you're gonna do this on all these squares and I'm going to put this on the ruler and bring it up here and I'm going to tell you why. We're going to sew on this line and we're going to sew on this line. When we cut this in half, we will have two half square triangles. We're going to put another fabric connected to this one and I'll show you in a minute. But let's go ahead and take all four of these large squares and we're going to mark them. Remember, mark them on the wrong side. All right, on one hand I got my Omni Grid ruler because there's two different type that I have. So the very first one I got, which is my oldest ruler, let me move this out of the way, is yellow. All right, there are no markings anywhere on this ruler as the, um, the frosted kind of markings, what I'm talking about. So nothing on the edge tells you where there's a half inch, quarter inch or anything. Then they came out with the green ruler and it has the quarter inch but it only has the quarter inch. So this would be okay. But let's say you don't own that. And let's say that somebody gave you a ruler or you're using a regular ruler. It doesn't make any difference. It just needs to be see-through. So if this is all you have, don't think you can't do the video because it's too confusing. Get yourself a piece of tape. Now this is washi tape, it's not regular tape, but that's fine, it doesn't make any difference. It's, I'm just showing you something. And you take your tape because you can use masking tape that's what they used to use before they had washi tape believe me somebody just invented this washi tape so we could have it nicer or for the sewers i guess you could say and i just ripped my tape but let's so what i'm doing is i'm showing you and this is what you want to do take your washi tape masking tape go the quarter inch and put it right there that's your mark for you now so you know that once you get to that you've got a quarter inch so when you lay it down on your fabric and you've drawn your first line you'll go over like that put it down a little bit so you can see it so you'll first mark your fur your dash line and then you'll move it over until you got the washi tape on that corner extending and then you'll mark it again so this will help you if you don't have the markings on your ruler I just thought about that when I was doing this about how people have different rulers and they don't have anything that's marked and they won't know how to do it and it'll be confusing which I've already had that happen a couple times with my marks the advantage of using the friction pen is that if it gets if you mark it let's I'm gonna give you an example here so let's say that I let me and now also I want to say while I'm thinking about it 
the middle of this square, no matter which direction you go, so it's not like there's a right way and a wrong way, it is, it has bias on it. And bias is the stretchy part of your fabric. So while you're marking your fabric, make sure you have a lot of pressure on your ruler up here because this is the part that's going to stretch on you. You don't want it to stretch or it will distort and your square will not be square any longer. Now we're going to go over here and let's say I accidentally went too far. And I'll give you an example. So let me get my other ruler on here that does not have any markings to give you an idea how this can happen to you. So I, it's right here is where my mark is at. And I believe that I got it on there. But now I'm not going to hold my ruler really, really hard. And I'm just starting up here at the top. And I'm just going down here and I'm going to make my line. Uh-oh. I got down here and now I see shucks. I went over too far. So, I mean, I can even see it now. Now I'm going to take you over here to the ironing board and I'm going to show you. Only if you've used a friction pen. If you've used a pencil or a regular pen, this won't work. So I'm just going to take my iron and slowly go over the mark and it's gone. And now I can remark it. Had I used a pen or a pencil, I couldn't have done that. And I changed my ironing board cover because if you know me in green, I couldn't stand that green anymore. came with an extra little piece to put your iron on to just rest it when you pick it up, not lay it down on there because you know the iron will scorch that. So you bring it back over here. I already got the same ones. And then you put your, I'm gonna sw swap rulers here. And then you put your ruler down and you, if you've got your washi tape on it, that's fine. You still put a firm pushing on here while you make your solid line because it's still on the bias. All the way down to the end of that corner, it will be on the bias and it will actually give. And then I flip it over, do the other side. I did not get rid of my middle line when I ironed. There wasn't any reason to. It was correct. It went from one end to the other like it was supposed to. And then just mark it. Alright, so that's my last one and we're going to put it together now. I'm using white thread and I'm using a 12 inch needle. Or number 12 needle, not a 12 inch needle. Since you're not starting in the corner. You should not have a problem with your fabric being dragged into the little hole of your plate on your sewing machine. Make sure you don't go over any of your pins. And we're going to do them all the same. So take your time. I have a 2.5 inch seam. If you want to go smaller, you can. If you want to go bigger, you can. It's up to you. And this kit is made out of 100% cotton. Now, if you all want to go ahead and you want to chain stitch, you may. I'm having difficulty underneath my feet because my dog has his little carpet all watered up and I'm fighting for my pedal down here. And to chain stitch it, all you do is don't cut your thread when you're done. Just stop sewing and then go and put your next fabric up underneath there and sew it. I'm going right on the line. If you miss it and you go too far to the left or too far to the right because you kind of veered off, go back over the spot before the veering off and put your needle down on it and then just come forward with it. I'm going to show you on a piece of um, a sample here. I'm just going to get me a piece of fabric and give you an idea of what I'm talking about because I don't want you to sit and tear out a lot of stitches when you don't have to and it's not necessary. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to draw a line and pretend that we just, it's two pieces of fabric here, like that, and I'm going to act like this is my fabric. I'm going to do it down here at the corner. This is my line. Sometimes it's easier to see it. So let's just pretend that I went ahead and I picked up and started right here and then all of a sudden Okay, now I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to break. I'm going to cut my thread so you can actually see it. Let me clip this off here. All right. So let's say that this is what you did by accident. Let's see. It's 
hard to see. Okay, so see where the line is at? I mean, it was fine up at the top, but all of a sudden, boy, I just got way out. So this is what you do. You cut it, put it back underneath where you started, take your needle, place it down where you think that you beard off on it, and just continue, put your needle in and start over, continue, and I'm gonna show you. Get done. Let's see if I can get it to focus now. And see where I've stitched on the line? So now you can go back and tear out that little bit right there. Okay? Don't stop and tear the whole thing out and get all frustrated. Try to correct your mistake when it happens. It'll be a lot easier and you'll get done a lot faster. And you won't be so frustrated with your work. Don't think that you're a failure if you make a mistake. I make mistakes all the time. Sometimes I do it when I'm making um, my videos. Sometimes I do it when I'm not. I mean, there are actual days that I can sit in this sewing room and I can work all day long. And by the time the end of the day has happened, nothing is accomplished because I have made so many mistakes that I couldn't get anything done. And that is the way it felt last weekend. I felt like I got nothing done. Although I spent all day until midnight in my sewing room. And then when, uh, and that was Saturday night. Then when Sunday night came, I'm um, Sunday daytime came and I started over in here, then ev for some reason, everything went right on Sunday. And I don't know how the heck that happens. And I wasn't even doing the same thing. It was something totally different. So let's go ahead and change stitch these just like I did before since I broke that thread to show you something. And then I'm going to show you how to cut these apart so you have an idea what you're looking at. Because we have to make these squared before we go on to the next step. So we've gotten this far. We've sewed on this line, we've sewed on that line. Now we're going to cut between the two. So get your rotary cutter and set your ruler up. And you can either Put it on that line that you've drawn, or you can go on this line here, which is the quarter inch line from the middle, and cut it. Either way, once it's cut, now you have what's called a half square triangle. We are going to iron all of ours to the darker side of the fabric. First, go ahead and finish all your squares, get them all done, and then we will iron them. For this next step, I'm using my rotary mat. If you don't have one, that's fine. And since I have fabric with design on this, I want to make sure that I get the most out of my design. So I have a lot down here, I have four different things versus that, keeping in mind that I'm going to use a quarter inch up for my seam. So I take my ruler, and you need to have an exact size of six and a half, because that's what we're squaring this up to, or larger. I would not go smaller because it'll be too difficult for you. I'm going to go ahead and use both my rulers so I can show you. You're going to line up this diagonal line down your seam and then you're going to, I'm going to go further down than up so I keep more of my picture in here. And then I'm going to hold my ruler firmly. Rotate that and keep, keep it down on there as tight as I can so it doesn't move. Now, that is my six and a half inch square right there. Now I'm going to try it with another ruler that is bigger in case that's what you have. This is an eight and a half inch. I'm going to start again taking the diagonal mark because that's what you're going to be marking on and my ones go this way so the first thing I want to do is I want to 
line up the diagonal line with the seam. Now, if for some reason, and this has happened, let's say that instead of my seam being straight, it's a little bit off, okay? What you can do is you can go over to the ironing board, spritz a little water on your square, and when you iron it, iron it so that the seam is straight. Slowly come up the seam to straighten it out. And then once you've got the seam straight, then take your iron and push a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. Okay? That's what you want to do if when you put this down, it's way off and it won't line up. Because if it doesn't line up here, your square won't be square. It'll be off a little bit. Now, if it's a teeny weeny bit, it doesn't make a difference. But if it's off so much you can tell it, you'll be upset about, about it. So I want to keep the most. Here is my six and my half. Let me get a little closer for you here. Hopefully that light won't be in the way. Let's get it to focus. This right here where you see that line going that way and this one, that is my six and a half. So that's what I'm looking at as I'm moving this down on my fabric. Because if you look, I'm going to show you here in a minute. When I come down to here, this is six and three quarters all the way up there. That's fine. I could come all the way down here to the six and a half. I don't want to do that. I want to at least have a little bit that I have to take off on all sides. But if I do this, then I have less I'm taking off on this, which is what I want. I want less coming off on this. All right, I turned my overhead light on, and I have a different light on, and hopefully I don't bump myself in the head over here, because I've got it up over my head. All right, so what I want to do, since I see my six and a half down here, it's still got fabric, I'm going to cut right here. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to lift my ruler and go the other direction, and now I'm going down to this six and a half corner. And let me show it to you here. On the bottom, there's a white line right here, but there's also the black line. So you make sure that's on the fabric. Let me see if you can see that. So what you're looking at is this right here. This black line right here, this one here, and it needs to be right on top of that fabric. And right on top of this fabric here. That's the reason for the corner here. You want to make sure it goes at a corner, and this is straight up the middle, which it is, and then you cut your fabric. And then that is six and a half inches. And you do every one of your squares just like that. And it looks like I got a little bit here on the edge that I need to clip off right there. Okay. And that's it. So go ahead and do all of yours like that. This is how you're going to lay it out. First off, take all these little two inch squares and mark them, just like we did before. You're gonna lay this out based on your directions and the directions are like caddy corner like this. That'll help you understand it better. We did it like this. All right. This one is opposite that one. That one with the trees is opposite the one with the trees. The reason you're doing this is you're going to take these and they're gonna be situated in the middle here. So you put it upside down so that it's right sides together and you're going to put one on every one of these and you're going to sew them. Just like this. But you're positioning your block so that you know which end to be putting it on. Then when you sew it, you'll trim off this end here. You're going to trim this off and it's going to be flipped like that so that all the little reds will be in the corner. Now don't shortchange yourself because when you cut this section off here, this piece has to lay exactly like this so that you get 
the six and a half inch block that you've previously cut. So if you have to, instead of sewing on the line, take your needle and go right off the line towards the end of the fabric. Then when you fold this over, because you're gonna do it on all of them now, not one of them, but all of them, they identical. So that when you fold it, it'll have more than enough. So if you have to trim it, that's fine. You can trim a little bit, but they'll all have that same amount on that corner right there. Mark all of these, which I've done, and then sew. I'm laying it out like this, and I'm putting this on here to sew. That's what you're going to do. So I have them all laid out here, and they're all pinned and ready to go. If you've already got a kit, this block right here is incorrect, because what we do is we do sew them based on this side, which means that this one and this one, if you note, here's your darker gray and then the lighter color and then a white and a medium color and then medium and white and light and dark same thing here and then the third one is supposed to be the same way now they're going to fix it on the kits going forward but just so you know it's three of them in a row this one you can tell that it's wrong and that's fine it's just a typo in the picture here okay because this one here needs to be reversed. The darker one needs to be on this side and the lighter one needs to be on that side. See right here? Same with the bottom down here. It's just reversed by mistake. But we're gonna make them all three to look identical. So let me go ahead and we're going to, I'm gonna go ahead and sew these. Now as I sew these, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chain stitch this. I called and I spoke with Jody over there at the Fort Worth Fabric Studios and when they run out of the kits with this fabric, they're going to put different fabric in it. It'll be just as pretty. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a video of that one. And then I'm going to do this little piece right here that I'm doing differently. For those who think or for those not that think but feel like this is too much of a challenge for them so that you can do it a different way I'm not gonna do it on this one but I'm gonna do it on the next two squares I'll probably make those into a pillow I don't know yet at this point well let me go ahead and we're gonna attach all these on and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the first one off here and I'm gonna take a look at it when I flip it over to see if I need to go over on the other side so if I go like this I can see when I turn this, let me show you here, when I turn this, my square is still going to be the same exact size. It's going to be six and a half. So I should not have to do any trimming on it. Let me go ahead and finish sewing these, and you guys can sew them all too, and go ahead and do them chain stitch. Just one right after the other. And then when we come back, I'll show you what they all look like. And then I'll show you how to cut those off. Here they also. are. And what I did was I went ahead and I ironed them down to make sure that they went over the edge. This one, as you can see, didn't quite make it. So I'm going to redo this one. This one made it just fine. And that's what I did. I did it like that so I could see if I needed to redo it. Now keep in mind that you're going to be cutting this off. So I'll show you here. Just take your ruler. And this has the mark, the one quarter inch. So I just go to the line that is sewn. Let me see if it gets you a little closer there. And then all I do is take off the edge here. And then I'll go back over and I, and I will sew that. And since I know that that's six and a half, I don't have a problem with redoing it. And I just do all of them like Another that. Another way to do it is take your ruler. And remember now, this is my six and a half inch. Go ahead and line up here at the bottom on the line just like before. And then look up here and see if it clears it. And mine does. So then I can go ahead, open it up, and cut it off. Also, I want to let you know that the last four kits have been fixed. And so if you want to go over there and get yourself a kit, by all means, go ahead. The next one that they create will not be this fabric. It's going to be a different fabric. 
Kringle and Kloss. So you can look that up and see what that looks like if you'd like. Let me go ahead and finish I went these. Ahead and I've laid them out because we're going to do the top row and then we're going to do the bottom row until we have our three squares and then we'll go on to the next one. So let me go ahead and pin the top and the bottom row. So these are the two that we're going to pin together. But keep in mind, we need to have these nestle, remember? And when you flip them over, let's see if you can see that. Both of these are going up. Somebody's got to go down or they're not going to nestle correctly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the dark, the one that's got the darkest on it. So this side here, or this these two prints, that's the one that I'm going to take and I'm going to switch it and have it go the other direction. If you want to pick the other color, that's fine. Just make sure that you're consistent, whichever one you do. And now we're going to try to match these up. So do the best you can. I've already had to take, I went ahead and did one practice and I've already had to take it out once because it wasn't quite close enough. I don't know why, I'm just saying it wasn't. So I'll put two pins, one here and then one at the intersection. And then I'll go down here and put one about midway. And then we'll sew this. Let me go ahead and I think I'll do the next two also while I'm at it. Now do one first to see if you can do it. If you can't, and let's say that you haven't even gotten this far and you're frustrated, you tried out to the um, little red square and it didn't even, I mean, it hasn't even worked the first time around when the very first step while you're sewing it on the corner. Don't fret about it. I am going to show you how to do it differently. I want to go ahead and sew this now. So like I said, if you haven't even gotten this far because you you just cannot get it, I'm going to show you a different way to put this little red square on without sewing it and cutting it, which is what we've done so far. Now I'm hoping this stays put and works. We're going to find out here in a minute. So before I even finish, I'm going to take a look at it. And that one looks all right. So now I'm just going to put my needle in back where it's already been sewn. So all that'll do is just lock it in place because it's like double stitches on it. I'll finish sewing this. This one works. I'm going to take a look at it too. I'm trying to see if that's going to pass or not. Yes, it will. Let me go ahead and get this going. down and this is all being sewn at a quarter inch now I'm not doing a scant or anything now when I pin these two pieces together I start here with this intersection on the right then the middle one then the left one and then I go out to the left and pin two times and come to the right and pin two times and then I'm going to sew it this way my intersections are all set before I even start sewing. that if I pin these 
intersections sideways instead of straight up and down, it's better. I don't have as many mistakes. I'm not quite sure why, but I just, for some reason, that's what's going on. Take a look at it here. There's the next one before it's ironed. Here is our letter F, and the directions want us to take this and make small. So we're going to cut this into four different small triangles. So that you should have two pieces, so each one's going to be cut to make the four. Now you can do one of two things. You can take your friction pen, pencil, whatever, wrong side, and mark it from corner to corner, or you can take your ruler and set it from tip to tip, and then just cut your fabric. But remember now, you're on the grain, so you're gonna wanna hold it down really, really tight as you cut it. This gives you two pieces. And then you cut the other one, which gives you another two. So do whatever you're more comfortable with, because you don't want to ruin it. And I'm just doing it end to end. I'm not going to mark it. And now these are the four small pieces. You're going to take that great big huge piece that you did, and you're going to cut it into fours. Here is where I use my yardstick because I don't have a long enough ruler. So I put it on the end down there and I will mark this. Just like that. And I'll just hold on to my ruler and there I go. And there we go. Okay, so I folded it in half. I have a mark up here. Line it up down here. And then cut this in half. And that's how I get these big triangles. Again, fold it in half. Mark it down here at the end where the halfway mark is. I'll put the flat end away from me. I can see it up there. I'll put a mark just to make sure, right there. Come down to the end. And then just cut it right in half. There you go. And that gave me four large triangles and now back to the other side of the table this is showing how it's to be laid down and I'm gonna find the middle point because I'm gonna fold that fabric and match it up to the middle of that right there on both ends so we're gonna do that first so you're gonna take it corner to corner like this and you're gonna pinch it right there then you're gonna put your right sides together like this and you're going to pin in the middle first. Pin in the middle, go to the right or the left. It doesn't make any difference, but be careful. This is the bias. And remember, the bias stretches. So I put one about in the middle, and I came out to the end. And I'll put another one right here where the seam is at. And the seam is right there. Then I'll go the other direction. Put one in the middle here. I'll clip these scraggies off here in a minute. And then one down here at the end where that seam is at, which is right here. And I'll just snip this off. There we go. And now we're going to sew this first.
and I'm going to take this to the ironing board and iron it. We're going to repeat the process, so you're going to go corner to corner again, pinch it right here in the middle, put your right sides together, I'm going to iron this open or it looks like that. Now if you're following along with the directions, this is where we're going to be putting the large. It's going right here. So let me move this up a little bit and place it for you. Now on this one it goes like this. Just keep, um, just think of the largest being on the outer side. And so we don't need to fold this piece. We're just going to lay it over. And we're going to start at this end and we're going to pin it and just pin it along this entire side because that's going to go up against the edge right there. It'll look like that when you get it all pinned and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew that seam. Now we're going to iron this open. Look like that. Let's set this aside while we sew the next section. So you're going to take one of your large triangles and you're going to put it on the right hand corner of your square. Now keep in mind this square is on point. Alright, so that's how you want to have it set so that you don't get confused with it. And we're going to put a large one on this side and we're going to put a large one on this side. Okay, now this isn't biased, this is straight of grain, so we have no problems with this. So like I said, we're not going to match this up. All we're going to do is take it, lay it, we're going to pin it from that end to this end, and sew it. It should look like this. I keep ironed it. And now we're going to put this big one on this side. Let's do that. The second section done, and we're going to move it aside, and we're going to start on the third one. Now we're going to sew the large one on first. And remember, we just start at the edge and pin it. And then when we come to the bottom left, excuse me, the bottom right and the bottom left, this is where we fold our fabric so that we can connect it to the middle seam here. So let's do the top part first. Now here it is before it's sewn together, and I wanted to point something out to you. See, it's not together yet. See, this is how it's going to look when it goes together. Now, when I made mine for these squares here, the trees are pointing towards the Santa Claus. I have two like that. So here's the other one where the trees are pointing towards the Santa Claus. But on the next one, they ended up going the opposite direction. So I put that square in the middle so that it would balance itself out. That's just the way mine turned out. So let me go ahead and we're going to piece it because we're going to meet this seam right here. I have it all pinned, so now we're going to sew this in, and this is the first section we're pinning together.
Now for the last section. So on the last section of it. Take your time so you don't stretch the bias out. And you can pin it as much as you'd like. There it is, all completed. Turned out really nice. That would look really nice on anybody's table. Coffee table, dining room table, it makes no difference. Even on the mantle. So there is the pin tucked pinwheel table runner. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And one last thing I want to say is if you don't have anybody right now that does long arming for you and you're interested in using the Fort Worth Fabric Studios, they do have a long arm quilting service in Fort Worth, Texas if you're close by. And if you are interested, you can call them at 940-784-3233. If you want to, you can get on their website at www.honeycombquilting.com. Or if you'd like to email and ask questions, you can email hcquilting, Q-U-I-L-T-I-N-G, at gmail.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to get it up for September. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.